Okay, uh, <clears throat> so uh, our next topic of presentation is environmental health, which is a very broad and very important subject, especially in this century of ours, as we are already witnessing climate crisis uh, and all. So environmental health and environmental factors and pollutants impacting human health. So this is part one of our lecture. The, basically, this is a lecture series, and this is a very wide and very diverse subject. Uh, so it would be unwise and unjustified to just touch it and do not go into the basic details and do not go into the specifics. And just, it will not do justice if I try to cover it in one sitting. So I, <clears throat> I will try my best to deliver the basic definitions and basic concepts about the environmental health, and then we'll move on to the environmental factors and pollutants impacting human health. So <clears throat> introduction. <clears throat> the external or internal surroundings of human beings comprise of environment, which plays a crucial role in our health and well-being and productivity. The way we live by reflects in our surroundings and directly impacts the lives of all the human, all the living beings around us. Therefore, the study of environmental factors and their impact on human health is extremely important. So the way we live by is basically what we choose our environment to look like. If we have a very healthy lifestyle, if we care about our external environment, if we care about the place where we live in, if we care about the people we live with, and if we care about the animals and plants and all the living things we live with, then the environment we are living in will be a beautiful environment. And if we do not care about our environment, then definitely, <clears throat> our environment will start to get deteriorated due to human activity, due to our activity. Therefore, the way we live by reflects in our surroundings and directly impacts the lives of all the living beings. It's not just human. I never, I didn't write human beings. I'm writing the living beings around us. Therefore, the study of environmental factors and their impact on human health is extremely important. There is also a difference between environmental health science and environmental science, which needs to be clearly understood before diving deep into the subject. So there is a clear difference between these two sciences. One is the study of environmental things like environmental sciences. It is a very broad term. Environmental sciences covers almost all of the basic life sciences and physical sciences as well. And there is an environmental health science. What's the difference between environmental health science and the environmental sciences? We'll cover it uh, ahead. So the learning objectives for our class. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, as is the style of my teaching, I always start with the definitions. So the learning objectives for the class of environmental health is important definitions. So first of all, we will try to understand what we are going to talk about in our today's class. So important definition. Then the difference between environmental health science and environmental sciences, then different types of environment, then components of our external environment, <clears throat> then impact environmental factors on human health. There are many factors which impact uh, human health, many environmental factors which impact human health, but as it is a very broad and very wide ranging subject, so I will cover three basic environmental factors in today's class. One of them is population imbalance. Look, I did not write population explosion because this is a misnomer these days. So I wrote population imbalance and I will justify why I did not write population explosion basically. Then there is industrialization. The second environmental factor impacting human health is industrialization. And then there is a third subject which is <clears throat> affecting human health that is urbanization. <clears throat> So we'll start with important definitions. So number one definition, 
is what is environment? So all of you people must be thinking that we are starting to uh, understand what is environmental health, but without, without a basic understanding of what environment is, we cannot go ahead and talk about the um, environmental health. So what is environment? Environment is the complex of physical, chemical, and biotic factors such as climate, soil, and living things that act upon an organism or an ecological community and ultimately determine its form and survival. So any complex of physical, chemical, and biotic factors which act upon an organism or which form the surrounding of an organism or any ecological community and then ultimately determine its form and survival is basically an environment. And what is health? We already know what is health, but as we are again and again discussing health-related subjects, so I cannot emphasize enough the basic definition of health. So health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. Always remember, it's not just physical and mental, it's social well-being as well. So health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being of a person, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Then there is the definition of environmental health. So I there are many definitions of environmental health sciences. So I chose the WHO, World Health Organization definition. So according to WHO, environmental health is a branch of public health science. There are many branches of public health sciences. As I am teaching you people public health related subjects. So environmental health is also a branch of public health science which deals with those aspects of human health, including quality of life that are determined by physical, biological, social, and psychosocial factors in the environment. It also deals with the study of those factors in the environment, which can potentially affect adversely the health of present and future generations of human beings. So basically, the branch of public health science, we deal with those aspects of human health, including quality of life of human being, that are determined by physical, biological, social, and psychosocial factors in the environment. So what the environmental factors have any kind of impact on human health, that is the, to study this aspect of public health science is environmental health science. So if a person is living in a bad environment and we start to study the impact of that bad environment on that person's health, then that aspect will be environmental health related to that person only. If we start taking this to a wider level and we start talking about whole of the human beings, human beings species, homo, homo sapiens species, then this will become a wide ranging environmental health science where the environmental factors uh, impact on human health is being studied. So environmental health is a branch of public health science. We deal with those aspects of human health, including quality of life, that are determined by physical, biological, social, and psychosocial factors in the environment. And then it also deals with the study of those factors in the environment, which can potentially affect adversity, uh, adversely the health of present and future generation of human beings. Then there is uh, uh, there needs to be a clear understanding. So I uh, took my time and then I wrote about this difference between environmental health science and environmental science. So basically, if we talk about environmental science, then that is a, a whole different story. And if we talk about environmental health science, that is a completely different thing. Environmental science studies the impact of humans on the environment. So whenever we talk about environmental science, we, we are studying the impact of humans on the environment, while environmental health studies the impact of environment on human health. So if we are talking about just uh, environmental sciences, we're studying the impact of human activity 
on their surrounding environments. And when we're talking about environmental health science, then we are uh, coming, coming 180 degrees back. We study the impact of environment on human health. If, even if the environment is created by human beings themselves, then that crea newly created environment, whatever its effect is on human health, that will be studied in environmental health science. Environmental science deals with the impact of human activity on environment. It is a multidisciplinary science which involves physics, chemistry, life sciences, ecological sciences, agricultural sciences, and so on. So environmental sciences are also a broad thing. It's not just a single science. Any uh, physical or life science that we study it comes under the umbrella of environmental sciences. While same, same at the same time, when we talk about environment, environmental health science, environmental health focuses on the impact on human health due to degradation in environment secondary to human activity. Mostly it's just like that. Then I just added some images. Then there is a World Health Organization image about uh, the environmental health. So we just, uh, on the left side of the uh, slide, how the environment impacts our health. People are exposed to risk factors in their homes, workplaces, or communities through air pollution, inadequate water sanitation and hygiene, chemicals and biological agents, radiation, community noise, occupational hazards, then there are agricultural hazards or agricultural practices, including use of excessive use of pesticides, etc. Then there is built environment hazard, then there is a climate change. So whatever we whatever harm we created in our external or internal environment, and then that harm uh, affecting our own health, when we start studying that, then that is environmental health. So whatever the bad environment or, uh, or mm, unhealthy environment has any kind of impact on human health, that will be studied under the umbrella of environmental health science. So, uh, and similarly, what environmental sciences covers on our right side, environmental science covers many kind of environmental sciences, including social sciences, including life sciences, including physical sciences. So social sciences, just like political science, ethics, economics, these are social sciences, history, sociology, anthropology, and then there are physical sciences such as engineering, chemistry, physics, geology, oceanography, and then there is life sciences such as ecology, biology, <clears throat> archaeology, etc. So basically environmental sciences is also a wider umbrella where we also study social sciences, we also study physical sciences, we also study life sciences. So all of these sciences uh, un come under the umbrella of environmental science, while the environmental health science covers the uh, impact of environmental factors on human health. I hope everyone got this concept clear because this concept is very, very important when we are moving ahead. Then we start talking about what environment is. Now, basically, our actual topic is starting from here. So what actually an environment is? We already talked about that. Then there are different types of environment. So whenever we talk about types of environment, there is biotic environment abiotic environment and man-made environment. So what is biotic environment? All the living things, including plants, animals, microorganisms, inside or outside our body, etc. Whatever living things which we encounter or which have any kind of impact on our environment and in the end on our health due to and uh, any kind of change that they bring in our environment, then that is biotic environment. Similarly, what is abiotic environment? All the non-living things such as climate, air, soil, water, mineral, etc. So all the non-living things which are part of our environment and they also impact our life. They also impact our health. They are 
part of abiotic environment. So all the non-living things such as climate, air, soil, water, minerals, etc., they form the abiotic environment. Then there is man-made environment. So man-made environment comes under the different umbrella. So including it includes all the things made or created by human beings, such as buildings, vehicles, uh, and synthetic chemicals. I'm not talking about naturally occurring chemicals because naturally occurring chemicals are minerals or organic substances which are naturally occurring. There are synthetic uh, chemicals as well which are created in our own industries, which are created by human activity. Then there are industrial equipments. So all of this environment, which is man-made, it comes under the name of man-made environment. Buildings are not naturally occurring things. Vehicles are not naturally occurring things. Synthetic chemicals are not naturally occurring things. Industrial equipment does not come out of its own. Everything has been created by human beings. So the environment which has been created by human beings and it also affects our lives, then that is man-made environment. Then Earth's environment. So our planet is Earth. So we'll talk about Earth's environment. So Earth's environment is made up of atmosphere, biosphere, lithosphere, and hydrosphere. <clears throat> At, uh, atmosphere it include uh, what is atmosphere it includes thick gaseous mantle surrounding the earth so whenever we start from the surface of the earth and start moving towards outer space that part of um, the uh, area is called atmosphere thus whenever um, we start we even if we, for example, if a rocket takes off from the surface of the Earth and goes beyond 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface, then it clears the atmosphere of the Earth. So, so the thick gaseous mantle surrounding the Earth forms the atmosphere of the Earth. It spreads up to 300 kilometers. Some books write it to 50. Some book some books wrote it to 70. Some books wrote 300, and some books even wrote 320 or 330, but most of the books say it's, it's spread up to 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Apart from naturally occurring gases, it also includes water vapors, industrial gases, and even microorganisms. So basically, atmosphere includes of gases. It includes of air. So our atmosphere is made of air. 79% of the air is nitrogen then there is almost nearly 21 percent of the air is oxygen and then there are many other gases as well many other substances as well there are water vapors in lower atmosphere as well then there are industrial gases which ha which have been eliminated over the course of last two to three centuries are also there and they're not going anywhere then there are suspended microorganisms and micro particles as well so all of these things are present in our Earth's current atmosphere. Then there is biosphere. So biosphere means uh, the part of the Earth which contains all the living organisms. So biosphere is the part of the Earth which, which can sustain, which can you uh, create or which can sustain the living organisms. So biosphere means from the depth of the ocean, from the depth of the ocean to that part of the atmosphere where microorganisms can stay alive. So the part of the earth which contains all the living organisms is biosphere. It can contain all the deep caves. It can contain all the deep uh, oceans. It can be uh, high above the sky, wherever any living organism is. It, it can be in hot water fountains. It can be around, uh, even around lava, lava, even, even, even around lava, even around hot springs, even around uh, caves, even around, um, even in the depths of the ocean, even in the at high above uh, the earth surface, even in the atmosphere. So wherever there is any kind of living organism, it is biosphere. Then there is lithosphere. So lithosphere is, uh, uh, includes the solid shell of any rocket planet, in our case, the Earth. The Earth lithosphere further consists of three parts, which is the core, innermost layer of Earth, which is 3,500 3, kilometers in radius, 
Then there is the mantle, which is middle layer of Earth's lithosphere. That is 2,900 kilometer in thickness. <clears throat> then there is the crust. So the core, the mantle, and the crust. The core and the mantle are the wider layers. And then there is crust. Crust floats on top of the mantle and is outermost layer. And its thickness varies from 0 to 100 kilometer. And then there is hydrosphere. It includes all of the water on the planet Earth, whether it's inside the surface of the planet Earth or outside of the surface of the planet Earth. And hydrosphere include seawater, oceanic water, and fresh water as well. Mm, roughly 97% of the water, as we already know, most of the people um, in, in this class would already know that 97%, roughly 97% of the water on Earth's surface is salt water, is seawater or oceanic water, and only 3%, and some books even say 2% of the total water is fresh water and then there <clears throat> the fresh water uh, is also <clears throat> you know divided into uh, the water running in the streams and rivers etc and the was water logged up in glaciers and uh, books say that almost 65 percent or 70 percent of the fresh water is locked up in glaciers and only 35 percent of the water Fresh water uh, is running in streams or rivers and uh, underground water, etc. So all of the all of these spheres, all of these um, parts of the uh, spheres uh, make up the Earth's environment. <clears throat> then there is a, a diagram about the layers of the Earth. And we already talked about the core, and the core is uh, roughly 3,500 kilometer in radius. The inner more in the innermost component of the core is solid, then there is liquid, then there is mantle, and then, then uh, mantle, and then there is uh, crust. And crust is 0 to 100 kilometer in thickness. So uh, then there are components, components of our external environment. So uh, whenever we talk about our human beings, for example, if we talk about our environment, then there are different components of our, our external environment. And uh, these components are physical component, psychosocial components, and biological components. So what are the physical components? Physical components of our external environment are air, water, soil, housing, climate, geography, heat, soil, debris, radiation. So physical components can be a, 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 a abiotic or man-made. So whatever the physical component is, whether it's a man-made physical component, whether it's any kind of abiotic physical component or even biotic physical component, but if it is a physical component, it comes under the umbrella of this type of component so air water soil housing climate geography heat soil debris radiation etc and many more things these uh, constitute our physical uh, environment then there are psychosocial environment so what is psychosocial environment i already told that there are social sciences linked with environmental sciences so our psychosocial environment plays a huge role in our mental health or our upbringing or our and uh, overall health. So psychosocial environment is also very important for us human beings. For example, cultural values, customs, beliefs, habits, <coughs> attitude, morals, religion of any community, then the education of any community, then the overall lifestyle, then health system. For, uh, and all of these things all of these things are very, very important. The, the psychosocial factors, <clears throat> the psychosocial uh, component of our environment is very, very important. But, so uh, whatever the thought process runs in our mind is dictated by our cultural values. It is dictated by customs, beliefs, habits, attitudes, morals, and our religion as well. Then how much educated our community is how what kind of lifestyles we have there are communities which have very healthy lifestyles people talk for uh, kilometers daily people are uh, sports loving 
people are very energetic people love to do exercises and then there are communities where there is the having where where having a sedentary lifestyle is a norm where people do not like to play much where eating sugar or eating bakery products is a norm and these kind of countries a very high rate of diabetes as well very high rate of obesity as well so lifestyle and education play a crucial low role in our external environment and then the health system the health system dictates what kind of mortality rate is running in the community what is the average age of any country is depicted by the quality of the health system then there is community life and then there is social and political organization of any uh, country or any region then there are biological components of our external environment so biological components as the name depicts <clears throat> you already know these are the living organisms in our external environment for example viruses bacteria algae fungi insects rodents, animals, and plants, etc. So any kind of living being which is present in our external environment, any kind of living being which is in our external environment is a biological component of our external environment. And biological component of our external environment also has a direct impact on our health. For example, in the case of COVID, as we already know that there is a new virus and people are getting mm, diseased with this new virus and that new virus was in our um, communities and in our countries then what happened that mm, tiny little microorganism which can't be even seen with any light microscope it can only be seen with an electron microscope but it govern the way we live for one or even more than one year all across the globe. So this one tiny little biological factor or tiny little biological irritant of our external environment turned the world we lived in upside down. All of the flights were canceled, all of the normal travel were canceled, all of the hoteling guidelines were canceled. Many people started getting dead from a simple flu-like illness and nobody knew what to do and nobody knew how to take care of such patients. So even a tiny little virus can have this much impact on our lives, then, um, then we need to understand what bigger environmental factors have uh, impacts on our human health and on, uh, on our upcoming generation. So there is a diagram uh, about the components of environment. So there are physical components like atmosphere, biosphere, lithosphere, and then there are social components as we already talked, community, economy of the country, society, cultural norms, religion, <clears throat> education, political organization, etc. And then there are biological factors such as abiotic or biotic. So in impact, uh, now we come to talk about the uh, the uh, main uh, subject of today's class, which is impact of environmental factors on human health. So environmental factors or pollutants can cause various health problems like mental illnesses, respiratory, respiratory diseases, heart disease, and sometimes of cancers as well. Similarly, people with low incomes are more likely to live in polluted areas and have unsafe drinking water. Children and pregnant women are at higher risk of health problems related to pollution. Then there are various environmental factors identified by environmental health scientists which pose serious health risks <clears throat> to human beings. So, any factor or pollutant which is present in our environment in man-made environment and it is causing health problems it needs to be studied it needs to be focused upon it needs to be studied by us it can it may be causing mental illnesses only it may not be causing any kind of physical illness it may be damaging the mental health of our patients only it may only dam be damaging 
the respiratory diseases it it may only be damaging the heart diseases uh, causing it may only be causing the heart diseases and even it may be causes some types of cancer as well for example in 1980s and 1990s it came out to be true that some scientists <laughs> were skeptical about the use of asbestos and then they came to know that asbestos causes lung cancer the asbestosis causes lung cancers and then there was widespread ban on the use of asbestos in many industries so uh, if there was no research on environmental factors causing damage to the human health we the people would have been dying till date due to the factors which couldn't have been studied in the past so it's just because of this environmental health that we have come this far, that we have come to know that many of the things which were considered safe for human for human consumption or, or which were considered safe for human contact are not considered safe anymore. And those things are now brought back from the natural industry. <clears throat> Similarly, uh, the income, uh, uh, low income problem, which is present in many countries, is also a problem. So, <clears throat> if a country has low income, then their health system is fractured, then their <clears throat> uh, nutritional system is fractured. So, all of these people, all of these people whose health system or whose nutritional system is fractured, they are likely to get more diseases related to the poor nutrition. So their environmental factors are causing, are causing diseases in such people. And similarly, as we already know, children and pregnant women are at high risk of health problems related to pollution. Children and pregnant women are the vulnerable section of the society. Even I should add the elderly as well. So children, pregnant women, and elderly are at higher risk of health problems related to pollution. There are various environmental factors identified by environmental health sciences which pose serious health risks to human beings. <clears throat> as this is a very broad subject, there are many environmental factors. I will focus on three <clears throat> environmental factors uh, uh, which have direct impact on human health in uh, this class, <clears throat> in today's class. So the first environmental factor having a direct impact on human health is population imbalance. So I did not use the word population explosion as as per my research, there is uh, this this term is not correct. And why this term is not correct, I will defend that viewpoint in my uh, with evidence as well. So I use the word population imbalance instead of population explosion. So the rapid uncontrolled increase in population in one part of the world while declining and aging populations in other parts of the world has become a major problem for the environmental health scientists. So the rapid uncontrolled increase in population in one part of the world while declining and aging populations <laughs> at the same time in other parts of the world has become a major problem for, for environmental health scientists. Similarly, the regions of the world with lower GDP per capita are witnessing an uncontrolled population explosion, which is creating joblessness, increase in crime, poor health conditions of the community overall, increase in waste products, as well as unequal distribution of resources among the populace. So the problem with the population imbalance is those countries which cannot carry the burden of already existing populations are adding to their population at a much faster rate than they can carry on. They are already under debt. Those regions or those countries are already under too much stress of joblessness. So the joblessness rate in such countries is already very high. A crime rates are already 
skyrocketing. Health conditions are already poor. The <clears throat> the problem with the waste products, too many waste products in the air, water, or soil are already there. And still, they are unable to control their booming population. And they are already unable to feed their present population, but the future population of those regions is increasing at a much faster rate, at an unsustainable rate. And the poorer countries already struggling with their economies are overburdened each passing year with ever increasing number of younger people whose needs are unfulfilled, resulting in poor quality of life. So basically, any country, for example, I will talk about uh, any uh, uh, country A. I will not name any country because that might offend uh, some people here. So I will not name any country. For example, any country, X, Y, Z, whatever that country is, is already under debt, is already struggling with uh, poor health uh, conditions, is already struggling with the joblessness crisis, is already struggling with the increase in crimes. And there is overburdened, and that country is also overburdened each year with ever-increasing number of young people whose needs are unfulfilled. It creates a disaster. It creates a problem. And at the same time, when we are talking about the poor countries creating too many young people, creating too many population, at the same time, the developed countries in the world are witnessing an altogether opposite problem. So the developing world, the poor world is creating too many humans whose needs are unfulfilled more than ever. And then at the same time, the developed countries in the world who can sustain the increasing population are witnessing an altogether opposite problem. And what that problem is, in developed countries, the birth rates have seen decreasing trends from the last three or four decades, resulting in labor shortages, lack of skilled labor, aging population with very low birth rates of local communities, resulting in demographic shifts in populations as well. So this is not a population explosion problem. I know you may, many people will talk about uh, the aspect that the poor countries are more and overall the world is uh, increasing its population, etc., etc. But there are many, many countries in the world which are uh, considered as developed countries and these countries are having an altogether different problem. For example, if we talk about the uh, population pyramid. So here in this slide, I added population pyramids <coughs> from Reddit. So these population pyramids are very easy to understand. Many of you people would already uh, know what a population pyramid is. So it basically differentiates the, the percentage of the population depending upon their age. So it <coughs> it is a geographical presentation of people of different age groups and their percentage in the total population. For example, the world gives us a mixed picture. More of the world contains of younger population, as we are already seeing in the 2022 data. But at the same time, what is happening in the low-income group of the world? What is happening in the low-income countries? The low-income countries are overburdened with too many young people and they're already struggling with the joblessness problem. They're already struggling with poor health conditions. They're already struggling with the poor education system. They're already struggling with very primitive industrial base. But at the same time, their growth rate is increasing at a much faster rate than the rate they can sustain. And then there are middle income countries. So middle income countries also give a mixed picture, but there are also, but these countries are also moving towards 
positive growth balance, positive growth, uh, positive population replacement. As the uh, popular, uh, positive growth is like the people dying per annum are less than people being born per annum. Then there is a high income group. For example, for example, just uh, as a test case scenario, we talk about Germany. So Germany has a problem that the, Germany and Japan, the two, two countries, these countries have a problem of aging populations. Now look at uh, a high income country. Uh, the problem with the high income country is the zero to four and five to nine age group is shrinking, but the middle age and higher age groups are getting wider. So basically what is happening? The, uh, the phenomena here is that more and more people, even they are rich, even they can afford to have healthy babies, even they afford to give them health, very good education, even they can afford to give them very good health condition, even they can afford to give them all the needs of the world, but they have chosen not to have kids. So what is happening in high income countries? Those kids which should have been or which, which are in, a, uh, in very higher number in low income countries are here, here are their uh, strength is getting low. Here, aging population is uh, greater than the replacement population. The young kids being born are less and the people getting old and the people getting, uh, the people dying are more. What's happening? What's the problem? These countries have very good industrial base. These countries have very developed health systems. These countries have very, very developed education systems. But the problem which they are suffering from is that their industries are, are having severe labor shortages. They have a grown industry. They have built up industry, but there is no skilled labor to run that industry because their population is in negative. They have no younger people coming in to replace those people who are getting old. There are no younger people coming in to replace those people of the middle, middle age group who are getting retirement. So the problem is they have to import the skilled labor from the low income or middle income countries. For example, I will give example of my own country, Pakistan. So we export too much skilled labor every year. In this year alone, in 2023, in past year, in past year alone, in 2023, 1 million skilled labor was exported to high income countries. And why? Because the high income country group, uh, its own population is shrinking. They have a developed industry, but there are no people to run that industry. They are a developed health education, health system and education system, but there are no people to run that health system and education system. <laughs> Similarly, in the case of China, the growth rate of younger population has decreased drastically, and now they are worried. They had a one-child policy for all, almost four decades, uh, four decades. Kids, and now they are worried that their policy has backfired and they are getting uh, they are suffering the, from the problem uh, of the same rich countries and uh, the problem is people are not uh, having more kids and their industry has increased drastically their industrial base has uh, widened drastically but now the problem is they are also suffering. I'm talking about China. They are also suffering labor shortages. They are also suffering from the lack of skilled labor. It's just because of this population mismanagement on behalf of the government. Similar is the case with the United States, but United States is a slow growth country where the people dying are still less than people being born. I hope you people got what I try to deliver. Then there is a second environmental factor are very important environmental factor and that is industrialization so all the industries generate lots of gases effluents solid matter thermal waste chemical waste which are most often released directly into the air water 
or soil of our environment, resulting in contamination of air, fresh water sources, as well as soil. So it used to happen, uh, if we go back 40 or 50 years back, the laws were very lax. There was no regulation, regulatory body. There was no uh, proper system. Even in today's world, in developing countries or in poor countries, there are no laws which govern any kind of industries because there are already very less industries and they want people to invest in their countries and they do not want the industries to run away from their countries due to lawlessness, due to crime rates, due to uh, militias harassing them. So there are already countries which have very lax laws who do not uh, question the industries about their waste products. But there are countries which are already taking care of industries so that their waste products can be controlled. But overall, if we talk about whole of the earth, the planet earth, the industries generate lots of waste products which are hazardous to human health. And this problem not only affects us, the human beings, but it also affects all the other living organisms in the same environment. For example, contaminated water from various industries in many countries in the world is dumped directly into the fresh water source, <clears throat> resulting in contamination of water streams and rivers, as well as groundwater wells. When humans eat fish from these contaminated water sources, they also start getting sick from various diseases such as heavy metal poisonings, etc. Similarly, int intake of contaminated groundwater also causes many health problems, especially in children. So it's just like the old saying, what you sow, so shall you reap. So whatever damage we cause to our environment, it reflects back on our health because of the deterioration of our external environment. One more example is the problem of smog in major urban centers around the world, which is formed due to excessive smog from combustion engines, excessive smog from industries, excessive smog <coughs> from rotary kilns, mixing with condensed water vapors, and it causes a multitude of respiratory illnesses as well. So. I gave you two examples. One is the contaminated water uh, from the contaminated uh, from the industries, and then there is example about of smoke, which uh, which is caused due to the industrial gases. So all of these things are having very much very problematic hazardous effects on human health. So air pollution here is causing many kinds of respiratory illnesses, then there is manufacturing and pollution. Many manufacturing units create too many hazardous synthetic chemicals which are left untreated into the surrounding environments, rivers or soils, etc. Then there are radioactive hazards related with the nuclear activity. Then there is hazardous waste, which is hazardous for the kids and overall community as well. Then there is plastic problem, which is causing deterioration of all of the green lands of the uh, planet. Then there is water pollution. Water pollution as the untreated water is directly <clears throat> dumped into the fresh water sources of the community. And when the community uses that polluted fresh water, all of the community, including human beings, as well as animals and plants, gets affected due to the use of that polluted water, starting from the fish. Then the third problem with our environment, which environmental factor affects our health is urbanization. It's the last thing. I will try to wind it up as early as possible so we can take maximum questions as well. Urbanization is a population shift from rural to urban areas. The corresponding decrease in the proportion of people living in rural areas and the ways in which societies adapt this change. It can also mean population growth in urban areas instead of rural ones. It occurs due to disproportionate division of resources among the populations of the rural and urban areas. So basically the problem starts with the disproportionate division of resources among the populations of rural and urban areas due to which people in the need of or in the pursuit of 
um, better resources start moving towards the cities. People tend to settle down in cities for better prospects of employment, education, housing, etc. But uncontrolled urbanization causes overcrowding and formation of huge slums in major cities, resulting in lack of even basic amenities like fresh water, round the clock electricity, proper drainage system, and toilet facilities in such areas as well. The cons of urbanization include overcrowding, traffic congestion, pollution, including air and water pollution, heightened social and economic inequality, increased living costs, resource conflicts between the inhabitants of those uh, slum-like cities, the decline of traditional industries alongside the rise of informal economies and potential for increased crime, violence, and social unrest, often exacerbated by rapid unplanned urban expansion. These factors can lead to a reduction in the quality of life and complex social and economic challenge in the urban area. So unregulated urbanization also results in loss of high quality agricultural land for the sake of city building. This phenomena is worse in, our, in my country, Pakistan. So there are too many housing societies being built on agricultural land and the government does nothing about that. If the government starts or wants to do something about that, the mafia, the real estate mafia, the builders mafia, just sabotages the political will and the politicians get blackmailed for the lack of support or they are blackmailed due to many other reasons or even they are bribed not to pass laws against the housing societies, illegal housing societies or illegal housing projects. So if there are no laws and if there are very lax laws, the agricultural land gets destroyed for the sake of city building, worsening the food shortage already present in such countries and harming the food security of such countries as well. So this, this picture depicts uncontrolled urbanization. If you look at above picture, it is a, a haphazard growth of a city with no proper street, <coughs> with no proper streets, with no proper road, with no proper planning. And in the part of the below picture, there, there is a slum present on the beach of a country. So there are thousands of people living in this slum and there is no regulation, there is no proper electricity, there is no proper sewage disposal system, there is no proper drainage system and it's for sure all of the waste is directly dumped into the water area, into the sea, just uh, adjacent to this society. Have a nice day.